Hello, I'm Ms. Werlow, the high school librarian, and I'm here today with Ms. Hecht, our prevention services provider, to talk to you about academic integrity. Academic integrity is taking responsibility for your own learning and being honest about your academic work. Academic dishonesty, on the other hand, includes cheating on an assignment, a test, or other activity where you're taking away your opportunity to develop your own skills to learn and to accurately represent yourself to others. Trusting in yourself and being someone others can trust is an important concept and is one of the key characteristics of a successful person. Having academic integrity is important because it can offer you peace of mind knowing that you believe in doing the right thing and that you always try to act consistently with those beliefs. Acting with integrity can reduce a lot of unnecessary stress in your life making you happier, healthier, and more productive. So there's some very obvious forms of cheating and academic dishonesty. And then there are some things that you may not be aware that you're even doing. So we wanted to show you some examples of both. Ready? What are you doing? John, could you just... Yes, yeah, seriously, what are you doing? Uh, all right, but you can't tell anybody. Yeah, sure. There's a girl in there. Okay. She's in my class, and I'm trying to watch her. Listen. Do her assignments, so that I know what to do on my assignment. So, you, I mean, if that's creepy than it could have been, uh, but you're copying her, essentially. Not word for word. But what happens if you have a test? I know, you're skeptical, I get that, but I've got some ideas. I've got some ideas. Really? Pretty thirsty. Wow. Well, I just... This isn't what it looks like. Was that a prof in your dream sequence? How did you see my dream sequence? Regardless, it didn't work out, did it? Not really, no. So maybe you could, I don't know, put more time into actually learning the material? Yeah, I guess so. I just, I wish I didn't drill these spy holes in my textbook. Wow. Okay. Uh, all right. Ready? John, come on. Okay, so maybe those were some pretty exaggerated examples of academic dishonesty, but we'd like you to consider the following scenarios. Some of these things may not be as obvious. A good friend of yours is in danger of failing his math class. If he does not pass the class, he won't be able to stay on the lacrosse team. He asked you to let him see your answers during the test. You want to help him and you are not the one copying answers. If you show him your answers, are you cheating too? Yes, yes you are. This is an example of facilitating academic dishonesty, meaning that even though you are not the one copying answers, you are providing information to another student that is in violation of the expectations of your teacher and the course. You're working on an essay for your English class and include excerpts from a paper you found on the internet in your paper, in your own paper. Is this an example of cheating? It depends. If your teacher is expecting your own analysis and does not want you using other sources, this is cheating. 
if you're allowed to draw from other sources, but simply copy and paste without crediting the original work or including any of your own ideas, that's also a form of academic dishonesty known as plagiarism, passing off someone else's words and ideas as your own. Your social studies teacher has assigned a project that you are to complete and present individually. You and your friend discover you have the same topic and decide to split up the work, altering the final presentations so they are not exactly the same. Is this cheating? Well, yes it is, because if your teacher's expectation was that you complete the assignment individually, he or she is looking for an example of your work. Collaborating on the project in this instant can be considered a form of academic dishonesty. You're taking a test remotely. Use your phone or written answers that are out of the Chromebook camera's view to help you answer test questions. This one should be fairly obvious. Is this cheating? Absolutely. You're expected to demonstrate what you know and how you prepared for the exam. You are given an access code by your technology teacher to use a specific software program for your class. You share the code or your account with a friend who's not in the class, but who wants to use the software for a project he is working on. And this is academic dishonesty as well. If the codes were provided, they should only be used by those students for whom they were intended. Sharing this type of information with students who are not in the course is a form of academic dishonesty and is the same thing as forging a signature. In most cases, it's also a violation of the terms set forth in the software licenses. You wrote a great research paper last year for English and received a grade of A+. You have a similar project due in forensics this year and submit the same paper to your teacher after making some small changes to fit the expectations of this assignment. Is this cheating? Yes, it actually is a form of cheating. If you did not check with your current teacher first, a duplicate submission, even though it's your own work, is a form of academic dishonesty. If your teacher does allow you to submit a revised version of the paper, just make sure to cite that it's a revision of a previously written assignment. You forgot to study for the chemistry quiz last night. Your friend has chemistry first period and just took her quiz. You see her in the hall and ask her what questions were on the quiz. And this is cheating as well. Obtaining test materials or questions before the test is administered is a form of cheating. Forms of cheating or academic dishonesty are copying another student's homework having someone else write all or part of a paper for you, and this includes buying a paper off the internet, continuing to work on a test after time is called, using formula sheets, your textbook, notes, or the internet during a test without the teacher's permission, listing sources in your work cited that you did not actually use in your own research, and providing outside help to another student on online assignments or tests, or receiving help yourself without the teacher's permission. And are the consequences of cheating worth it? Let's talk about some of the consequences that, could get, that can happen. So in high school, you can get an automatic failure for the assignment and you can get an automatic failure for the whole course. You could lose privileges such as participating in sports and other district activities. Your teacher, friends, family, teammates, coaches could lose respect for you. You could hurt your own self-esteem, mess with your ability to actually think critically and solve problems, and develop a warped sense of morality. Cheating could go on your permanent record. And the consequences could affect you when you're applying for colleges. There could be a black mark on your permanent record that could cost you the chances of getting into your top college or any college. And scholarship providers could also see your permanent record and not offer you scholarships and teachers may not provide you with a good or even any recommendation letters. And in college, there are very serious consequences as well. You could be suspended or expelled, and if this happens, you do not get a refund, you do not get any of your money back. Um, you could lose your scholarships or again, not get any in the first place. You could be put on academic, disciplinary, or athletic probation. And you could face copyright infringement troubles. That's right, you could be sued for cheating on a paper. 
And in the real world, you will not have developed that skill you cheated on. And if you think you got away with cheating in high school or college, you might be tempted to take shortcuts in life. But out in the real world, these shortcuts have pretty bad repercussions as well. You know, like getting fired and not to mention losing the respect of those around you. Here's an example that's playing out locally right now. Um, news just recently broke that more than 70 cadets at the U.S. Military Academy at West Point, right here near us, were accused of cheating on a calculus exam. 58 cadets admitted to cheating on the exam, which was administered remotely because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Most of them have been enrolled in a rehabilitation program and will be on probation for the remainder of their time at the academy. Others resigned and some face hearings that could result in their expulsion. The scandal strikes at the heart of the Academy's reputation for rectitude espoused by its own moral code, which is literally etched in stone. Cadet Honor Code is a cadet will not lie, cheat, steal, or tolerate those who do. Another example of the consequences of academic dishonesty um, is brought to you here by Mr. Massapus. Welcome back, Panther students. I'm Mr. Maspus, one of your assistant principals and the director of athletics here at the high school. And I wanted to take a moment to talk to you about a personal experience that I had back when I was a student walking these halls uh, with regards to academic integrity. So similarly to many of you, you know, as a sophomore, I had a packed schedule. Um, back in 2002, I was taking all advanced classes. Uh, I was playing three sports. I played AAU basketball and club soccer, American Legion baseball outside of the school. So as you can imagine, and again, like many of you can relate to, you know, I was busy and school oftentimes put a lot of pressure on me. I wanted to impress my family and my teachers by doing well and, and earning good grades. So one day, uh, one particular class gave me more trouble than the rest. It was Algebra 2. And again, as a sophomore, you know, math was something that didn't come as easily to me as things like English or history. So rather than spend hours trying to memorize formulas for, you know, uh, different components of Algebra 2, I wrote it on my hand and I went into the class. I'm taking a quiz and I'll never forget, you know, that day leaving that classroom, you know, as I'm taking the quiz, you know, kind of opening my palm and messing with my fingers, you know, and leaving there saying, whew, I did it, you know, and I'll never do that again. Well, little did I know that my math teacher had seen the whole thing. And when I got home, my, my father asked me to see my hand. So I showed him my right hand. Uh, and then he said, give me the other one. And sure enough, on my left hand was the <laughs> formula for sine, cosine, and tangent. And, you know, I was so embarrassed. My father was so disappointed. Uh, you know, he didn't yell or scream or anything like that. But, but basically what he said to me was, Brian, you know, I'm disappointed in you. You represent this family. You've got a reputation to uphold as a student athlete and somebody of high character, you know, and it's gonna be hard to recover that. And those words stuck with me for a long time. Uh, on top of that, the next day in school, I was so angry when I got to my math class and I saw my teacher you know, and she could see me stewing, you know, I, I wouldn't answer any of her questions or, you know, I, I just seemed negative. And she came over and she said, BJ, you know, I'm sorry, but you know, I can't let you do that. And uh, I had to call your father and let him know. And you'll be receiving a zero on the quiz. You're going to have to re work really hard to recover your grade. Uh, and I remained angry at her, like it was her fault for, you know, several weeks. You know, I, I struggled in math to begin with, and this just made going to class worse. Um, not to mention my average dropped plummeted because I got a zero on the quiz. Uh, but once I was able to get past uh, the guilt and the, you know, negativity that I was portraying on my teacher who didn't do anything wrong, once I took responsibility for my own actions, uh, you know, things got better. And, you know, from that moment on, I vowed to never cheat on a test or a quiz or, or a homework assignment again, 
because it's just not worth it. You know, it's better off going into a, a quiz or a test unprepared uh, or minimally prepared than it is to compromise your reputation, your academic integrity, uh, your average because a zero hurts a lot worse than, than a poorer grade, like a 50 or a 65 or something like that. Um, so I hope that that story resonates with some of you. And, uh, you know, we all make mistakes. That's something that is common, you know, in young people and even adults. I, I make mistakes all the time still at 34. But that was just a little story about academic integrity from my youth that I hope you can take and learn from, you know, at the end of the day, Panthers, it's not worth it. Uh, your integrity, your reputation is something you should hold dear to your heart and cheating, uh, academic dishonesty challenges that. So uh, good luck with your studies the rest of the year and don't cheat, you know, be honest, study, stay up on your, your academic crafts and you'll have the utmost success. Take care. Thank you to Mr. Masipas for that very personal account. And that leads us into our ne next topic, which is a discussion of your core values. Core values are personal values that guide you when making important decisions and doing important work. So here is a list of some core values, and I want you to take a few moments and think about which values resonate with you. Pick three to five values that are important to you and you aspire to have. Why are these values important to you? Do your behaviors match your values? And, and thinking about the West Point article that Ms. Warlu shared, um, the West Point cadets become the senior leaders that the nation depends on. So it's very important. We wanna have leaders that, that have good, strong values. So take a moment to read the list and think about um, the values that are important to you. Why is this so important? In high school, you learn information that helps develop different types of skills. You learn how to problem solve, to overcome obstacles, to bounce back after defeat, and to develop interpersonal and communication skills. These skills can help you succeed in all aspects of your life, whether it's school, work, or even a sport or hobby. The following questions were found on a job search website. They're useful in helping to decide the image you want to portray to others and how your choices impact how you feel about yourself. What kind of culture do you want to work or go to school in? What things, settings, or resources are necessary for you to do your best work? What qualities do you feel make strong, healthy relationships? What qualities do you admire mo most in your role models? What motivates you? What qualities do you wish to develop in yourself professionally and personally? And what are your future goals and what qualities will it take to achieve them? As you reflect on these questions, think about the core values you want to portray and the values you seek in others. And here's some alternatives to consider if, if you're tempted to, to commit um, academic dishonesty or to cheat on an assignment. You can ask your teachers, friends, or other students for help. This doesn't mean asking them for answers, but asking for their help. You might be surprised by how much people can and want to help you. Consider getting a tutor, your guidance counselor, your NHS advisor, the school or the local public library can help you find a free tutor. Remember what's really important. Yes, the learning, but if you're so focused on the grades themselves that you're willing to do things that are not in line with your core values, you are not actually learning. If you put honest effort into them, assignments will be more meaningful in the long run. Use online resources responsibly. There are study guides and advice for basically every academic subject, every book you've been assigned, every kind of homework problem. 
watch some videos, read some stuff. Just be careful relying on the answers you get from public online forums and familiarize yourself with what counts as plagiarism. And finally, rethink how you spend your time. If you're so overwhelmed with schoolwork and activities that you think cheating is the solution, it's time to rethink your priorities. Maybe it's time to scale back some of your activities, create a schedule for yourself, remove distractions, and reflect on how you're using your time. And in closing, I'd like you to think about these two questions. Are your behaviors reflecting your core values? And are your values guiding you to achieve your goals? And Ms. Warlow and I would like to thank you very much for joining us today for our lesson on academic dishonesty.